good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Heart for Iran webinar. Uh, we're really excited to be here with you today and have another great topic for everyone that's live in the Zoom webinar room. Uh, welcome. We're glad to see you. Please be sure to post your questions and we're going to definitely get to those and try to answer those throughout today's topic. Um, for those of you joining on Facebook and YouTube and all of those other social media platforms, uh, welcome again. Thanks so much for joining us. Please be sure to share this with your friends. After we go live, we always uh, archive this on social media. And so we want you to share this and get this uh, message out here. Today's going to be a great day, and we're really excited to have you with us. Today's topic is Generosity Path talking about generosity in the emerging church. And to have uh, that discussion, we have with me, as always, my co-host, Mike. Uh, welcome, Mike. It's good to see you. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Folks, well, we have been having, as, as David said, uh, about a year and a half worth of webinars every month. Uh, we come to your computers and your uh, devices to uh, to celebrate God's goodness and uh, for us to be able to share with you about God's work in Iran and uh, among the Farsi speaking world, the Persian world, uh, in particular, Iran, Afghanistan and Tajikistan. Uh, uh, we realize that there's a keen interest in the region. Uh, and if you guys are following the news, you realize that um, uh, the Iranian uh, people just uh, um, elected a new president. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Iran is of main interest to many ministries uh, because it plays such a key role in the region, yet it has its own challenges. Our goal is to uh, get together with you guys uh, every month and give you guys some insight, introduce some uh, some of our key friends and ministry partners to you so you get to know them and you see how God is using them. Today in particular, as my uh, co-host mentioned, we are discussing the role of generosity for the emerging church. Now, Jesus uh, fed 5,000 people um, with five loaves of bread and, and uh, two small fish. Um, his nature is the nature of abundant generosity. And um, the good news for you and I is that we can learn from that model. And today we're going to dive into that. Now, one of the things that, um, to be able to be generous is, is, a, is, a, is a biblical phenomenon. But um, different cultures and generations, they have a different approach to generosity. Uh, this may have to do because of the different worldviews. It could be because of the fact that, let's say, the church in Iran uh, does not have access to a healthy fellowship. They don't have access to Bibles as you and I do. Therefore, their, their biblical knowledge is very limited. Um, the, the, the generosity, the teachings of generosity, therefore, for persecuted regions because of the lack of biblical knowledge in that area and teachers uh, is very limited. Uh, and it becomes a journey to be able to really have an impact on the emerging church. The emerging church in Iran is growing fast. But the reality of the church in Iran is that, as far as its biblical knowledge, it's very, very shallow. The average age of a leader that is leading a cell group on an underground church group in Iran is roughly about six months in faith. So how do you come about and, and uh, bring the role and, and teach them the, the role of generosity where they're so young in their faith and lack the basic um, uh, principles or, or the resources and tools that you and I have so readily available? So today we're going to talk to you about one of the strategies that we have uh, uh, taken to do this. So I do want to go ahead and introduce our two guests. And please join me in welcoming our, our, our friends, Daryl Hild and Jay Paul. Daryl uh, is the founder of Generosity Path. For more than 20 years, Daryl has traveled internationally sharing the message of biblical generosity. In his role, the Generosity Path, he focuses on mission-related activities, strengthening and developing relationships with champions, facilitating journey of generosity and trainings, encouraging business people to be generous, and that's extremely important. Jay Paul, uh, it's good to have you with us, Jay Paul. He is the Senior Director of Field Relations for Generosity Path. Jay Paul oversees the global team as they build relationships across the world to inspire others uh, to join in the generosity movement. He is the lead facilitator trainer and loves spending time learning about each individual person and encouraging them in their journey. He has spent the majority of his career helping people to discover and give to causes all over the world. Before we jump into our conversation with Daryl and Jay Paul, I'd like to ask um, David, I wanna ask you a quick, quick, quick question. Can you tell our audience why Heart for Iran felt led to join our brothers at the journey of generosity, and maybe you could touch on uh, the, the proof of concept. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's do that. And again, welcome, Daryl. Welcome, Jay Paul. It's really great to have you Thank guys you. with us. But yeah, so Mike, you bring up a good point. You know, one of our roles as a ministry, <clears throat> Par for Iran, is to really be on the cutting edge of ministry ideas for that emerging church in Iran. And so you and I, we're always out there and we're meeting with partners that have creative ideas and are ready to help the emerging church go to the next step and the next level. And we want to serve that emerging church in whatever way we can. And so when we first got introduced to Daryl and Jay Paul, uh, I personally was really intrigued by the idea of teaching generosity and modeling generosity for an emerging indigenous church. And that's what their ministry is all about. So we personally, uh, Harfrey Ron, have taken it on to learn about their curriculum. And Jay Paul was actually with me. We trained facilitators, Farsi language facilitators uh, in uh, one of our regions. And we also did hosted some journeys of generosities uh, in our region to kind of get the Farsi speakers uh, influence with that. And uh, Mike, as you're asking, I mean, it really turned out great. And we saw, you know, mind shifts changing and people were able to say, you know, oh, we came from Islamic background, uh, but now we understand, you know, there's generosity of this Christian worldview and our Christianity and our beliefs now. And so it was an amazing process. And so we've enjoyed uh, being partners with uh, these guys for sure. So yeah, I'm excited about it. And again, I want to welcome Daryl and Jay Paul to talk about this. this is going to be a great day. So guys, thanks so much for coming to be with us. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, first question for our audience, let's really dig in. What is the journey of generosity? So I just mentioned we did that. What is journey of generosity? Great. I'll, I'll, I'll start us off and then Daryl, you can, you can add in, but um, I just want to say one of my highlights of, of being in the generosity path role was David, you and I being with those, those folks and, and doing a jog and then doing the facilitator training. Um, it was, it was so fun because in the training, we have people role play part of the retreat. And so listening to it happen in Farsi, it was it was almost emotional. It was so fun to hear that. Um, the journey of generosity is a retreat experience that is highly interactive and inspirational. We use um, storytelling and we invite lots of interaction between the participants. So it's actually not a teaching workshop or a Bible study. It is a highly interactive kind of self-discovery experience for a group of 10 to 20 people at a time. And, uh, and of course, over the last year and a half, we've actually done them on Zoom in this kind of an environment. But uh, typically before that, it would happen in an in-person kind of overnight retreat experience. And you have to, you just have to experience it. I'm not sure how much more I can say. The, you will get a link to a short two minute video um, we have it both in English and in Farsi that kind of describes the retreat and, and the experience. So, yeah, you'll have to forgive us because, you know, it's ingrained in us to say it's a teaching and, you know, that kind of a model. But it really is not. Daryl, do you want to talk about how I know this is important for you <clears throat> and when you guys created this to not be, you know, prescriptive? Do you want to talk right. a little bit more about Journey of Generosity? Yeah. So I think a couple of things that are that are, I think, unique and important to understand, too, is, we, you know, we don't use this to to also fundraise. Uh, we're, we're privately funded. And so we really want people to be able to to listen to this value proposition, because really what we're doing, it's a small group facilitated experience exploring the value proposition that is more blessed to give than receive. Right. So we we can believe lots of things and, and so on. But Jesus puts this value proposition out there. Is it really true? I mean, frankly, because the world says the more you get, you know, bigger, better, faster, more, you know, the, the better you're going to be. So uh, so what's the truth? And so we're not trying to tell you exactly where you need to end up. We're just saying, here's this truth that Jesus puts out there. Let's explore that. Let's talk about it. And we do that not in the way of lecture, as Jay Paul said, but really, by the way, of stories. And the reason why we use stories is because stories show application of this belief. 
So if that's true, what Jesus said, what does it look like in my own life? What would it look like in my relationships with my friends, with my family, maybe in my business, my community? Um, it, 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 the, those are all the dimensions that are explored in these stories that we show. And these stories are, are literally from people all over the world, different communities all over the world and in all different types of socioeconomic backgrounds. Well, let me ask you this question. So you guys don't have lectures. This is more of an interactive no. sessions that you guys have. Um, let, let me just even go back to another question. Why? Why, why did you guys start the Generosity or, um, Path organization? I mean, explain your mindset and what led you guys to start yeah. this. Well, there was a there was a significant gap in <clears throat> in the needs that the that the that the church had globally. Um, but it wasn't like that, that there were other Christians around the world that didn't have the resources. It's just that those resources weren't being deployed in a generous way. So what we say is there's there's a, a, there there's, you know, a lot of us who are tipping and a few people are giving, but very few of us are generous. And the reason is, is because we, you know, we, we, again, we have, um, you know, it's all about kind of worldview and what we believe. And so in a lot of ways, if the world says, you know, I need to, I need to be, you know, I have more safety and security and more importance if I have more, uh, then, then that's what we do, right? We, we invest more, we keep more, uh, and we might do a little bit because we know we're supposed to, but this is, this is the exciting part where, we think that most of us think that giving is more about obligation when actually when Jesus talks about it. And if you understand the grace of giving, it's about opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so very few of us move towards obligation. Right. But all of us, all of us love to hear and move towards opportunity. Wow. That's powerful. That's so the distinguishment between uh, opportunity and obligation. Um, we don't want to just see it as an obligation becomes a chore, but you want it to be heartfelt because Jesus' call is heartfelt. So it's right. an opportunity. And if you realize that it's a biblical opportunity, yes. you warm up to it faster. It's powerful. David, I, I know you have the next question. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, Daryl, about Jesus' statement that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And I feel like, you know, one of the things that's important for us as a ministry is to really complete the picture of the gospel uh, as we're ministering to the indigenous church and we're serving that <clears throat> church to make sure they have a complete picture of that. So just that, you know, a straight out question, what is the role of generosity in the gospel? What, well, Jay Paul, you want to take that or do you want me to? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, you know, I what I say to people is we were created to be generous. Our, our, the core of our DNA, we're created in the image of God the Father. And God is this overwhelmingly generous Father to us. You know, He, the, he gave us His Son. Um, the, the, uh, and, and so we see it as just essential. And what we see is people attend these retreats. We have a front row seat to transformation in yeah. their lives. We often have people who say, okay, I've had, um, a, a second conversion. You know, my first conversion was to accept Jesus into my heart and to live according to the gospel. And the second conversion was that conversion of, um, making our resources available and being stewards rather than owners. So, mm, yeah, I, th I would, I would add to that is, is, is actually, you know, a lot of us think, okay, let's, let's talk about giving and it's, and it's this action from here to here. And actually what we do is provide a, a actually a bigger context in the biblical message of generosity, because giving doesn't start with just the giving generosity doesn't start with the, the action of giving generosity actually starts with, with receiving because Jesus said, freely you have received now freely give, which begs the question, what is it I've received? Right. And so this is my going back to like, in one sense for us to really know who we, who we are in Christ. What have we received? We are, we are co-inheritors, right? We are co-inheritors. We are sons and daughters of the King. So when we understand who we are, and what we have received, that's that's why, when because a lot of us think, oh my gosh, I don't want to be the rich young ruler. What if Jesus asked me to give everything? 
Mm. Right. But but you know why he can you know why he can ask the rich young ruler or any of us that is because think about what we've received. And then what so then what do we have to worry about? We're, we're, it's it's you know, we're, we're playing with house money. Wow. Wow. I don't know if you guys are getting excited or not, but I want to again welcome those uh, group of people that are joining us a little bit later in our in our uh, live webinar, uh, Hearts for Iran webinar series again today. Uh, we are with our two wonderful friends, uh, Daryl and Jay Paul, talking about the role of generosity for Emergent Church. Uh, we are taking questions from you guys, no matter what platform you have joined us through. Uh, send us your questions. The second half of the hour, we'll be asking your questions from our guests. Uh, we are talking about, uh, again, the role of generosity for the emerging church. Um, I, I want to go ahead and uh, uh, J. Paul and Daryl, you guys are touching on something. I'm, I'm taking notes over here. Some of the key words. Uh, Co-inheritors to understand who we are in Christ requires biblical knowledge requires us to understand who we are now when we're talking about a um, an emerging church in particular let's let's talk about heart for iran's target audience emerging church in a hostile environment in a persecuted region where there is um, where there's pressure where families are um, are not um, are, are, are discouraged uh, from ca gathering in homes uh, there's no such a thing as free church the bibles are are, are uh, outlaws uh, outlawed are limited in iran they're illegal um, that's one component of complexity. And then there's a cultural uh, uh, challenges. Iran is an oil rich country, yet it is at the brink of bankruptcy. So mm -hmm. an average individual does not have money to give. All right. And you said you said you have to be able to receive before you give. Yep. But um, the, the bigger question that, that is over here is it's very difficult. And we have found ourselves to be in a very difficult position to come to our audience. The Iranian Muslim background believers, the Iranian mm -hmm. new believers that reside in Iran, you touched on the worldview. Um, it is, it is. They have an argument. They're saying, "Look, I wish I could go ahead and financially support, but I can't because um, because a part of the culture is receiving, and they rarely give, and there's no biblical teaching." So the question that I, that that uh, is big to be asked is, why is it important uh, for an indigenous church? to be generous yeah. do they need to be generous um, why is it important yes yeah well i i would say i mean i think part see and, and mike you've, you've implied this too is it is it and i and this is an important piece for us to understand is it you know uh generosity is not just defined in financial terms right and so we think well you know we don't have a lot so, um, you know, we, we can't be generous. The question, ha the question again, you back it up and say, what have I received? Who am I in Christ? What do I have? You know, just as he asked Moses, what do you have? You know, what do you have in your hands? What, what has he given me? You know, so we, we have some great stories from places that are even from a social economic standpoint, worse, worse than, you know, than, than what you mentioned, like in the, on the border, borderlands of Ethiopia and Somalia. Right, poorest of the poor, they they did a uh, they did a journey in generosity uh, with with you know from an oral preference learning side, and one of the things they decided, well, what do we have? We, you know, we don't have anything, right? We can't be generous. We don't have anything. But as they thought about it, what do we have? One of the ladies says, well, we can we can give everybody a smile. We all have smiles. Wow. And so wow. what they started doing was, so they they actually came to this thing because they had. They had uh, actually knocked down like a neighbor's wall and they had no money. The neighbor's mad when they were trying to do something with the church. So they called one of our friends that came, and he said, well, maybe this generosity guy can lend us some money. And he says, no, let me teach you all this stuff. So they ended up going out around the whole village all the time, just giving smiles away. What 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 ended up happening is that people are like, why are you smiling? Why are you, what are you smiling about? And many people. Many people became, you know, or, you know, people started coming to the church, came to Christ. The, the money, the, the money showed up. They, you know, that they, they, they repaired the guy's wall. But it's this whole thing about where in, this, in a lot of ways, right, we're, we're both givers and receivers. So the widow and her two mites or the little boy, as you mentioned before, with the, you know, he had a lunch, a lunch that his mom packed for him, right? Five loaves and two fishes. Our responsibility is not to feed the 5,000. What, what our opportunity is, is when Jesus says, what do we have out there? And a little voice says, well, I've got this. And then we see what Jesus does with it. See, because this ultimately, 
I think what we do is we, we, we are thinking so much in, in just temporal terms that we forget that there's kingdom math. Wow. Yeah. And, and I, I would say, you know, when, when Daryl and I first started doing this, I remember Daryl said to me, okay, we're going to focus on the major global financial markets, you know, London, Hong Kong, Singapore, Dubai. And, and, and that was kind of where we thought we were going to really do this movie and things have happened in those places. But what has surprised us is Venezuela, Romania, Zimbabwe, all of these countries and others like that have had significant movements of the journey of generosity. And so countries where you would say that's a receiving country, they don't have anything to give. They have actually just blossomed in terms of this message. That's fantastic. Uh, Jay Paul and Daryl, thank you guys so much for sharing that story. You know, I think one of the things for our viewers, guys, if you're watching this, uh, definitely send us your questions. And I want you just to get what Jay Paul just said. You know, there's receiving countries and there's giving countries and stuff like that. This ministry is literally kind of destroying those boundaries yeah. because you're seeing that, you know, I you might be watching this saying like, what can I give to help Iran? And, you know, you have a heart for that. <clears throat> We don't want to dissuade you from doing that in any way, but we want you to be kind of awoken to the idea that this indigenous church needs to learn to be generous as well and that they'll get the blessing from that. And so these stories you guys are sharing are amazing in the retreat, which again, Daryl said, there's no fundraising in the retreat. That's a fun part because when we told the Farsi people, Hey, we want to do this generosity conference with you guys what, what do you guys want? You know, they, they can't, what, what's, what's the ask? What's this all about? But then when they get into it, they learn that it's not like that at all. And they really do have it. You know, when you were telling the story, it reminds me one of the videos in the, in the retreat is the handful of rice. And it just, you know, it just talks about from people's poverty, how they were able to give so much and I just want to ask you guys, can you share a couple more examples? What does indigenous generosity look like? Can you get, give us a little more insight into that? Yeah. I, Jay Paul, why don't you tell him about Jose's and his father's story about their, their church in, in Caracas? Uh, uh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, so um, Jesus San Pedro and his father are in Venezuela. They're businessmen, entrepreneurs, significant businesses. And the government of Venezuela actually um, uh, took all of their business assets. They had like a mall and and stuff like that, and they just they, they basically confiscated all of that. And um, and so it was right around that time that Jesus and his father came to a journey of generosity that I was facilitating in Panama. And um, we had some kind of influential Latin American leaders who were there. We, we did the retreat and then we trained them how to facilitate. One of the one of the kind of the secret sauce of the movement is that it is driven and led by volunteer hosts and facilitators. So we just give the retreat away. So we did this with Jesus and his father and they took it back to their church in Caracas and they uh, they did a couple of retreats. And that was in a kind of a November, December timeframe. I think this is around 2015. And the people in that church actually gave the entire budget for the whole year was raised like in January. Um, So here is this incredibly um, difficult deal. You have inflation out of control. You have businesses that are going bankrupt or being taken away. And yet the response of these people in that context was to give radically generously in that. It's just an amazing story. That's incredible. And we have a, um, we have another story too in Bangladesh where, um, you know, just uh, there's a, a movement amongst the, you know, a lot, a lot of the people there are ultra poor. Uh, they were giving um, like 31 cents um I think it was 31 cents a week. Is it a week or a month, Jay Paul? Do you remember? I don't. I think it was a week. A week. 31 cents a week, basically, on average, um, what, what, what people were giving. Uh, and, and there's like 80,000 people in this movement there in Bangladesh. And after they took the journey generosity through through this movement, 
um, very soon after that, the average giving went up to 52 cents. Oh, yeah, that's powerful. So, it's so you guys, obviously, you guys are going around the world. Um, you just gave us an example of Bangladesh, Ethiopia, Venezuela, and in Iran, we have worked with each other, we're working with each other. What are the, can you identify for us and our audience, what are cultural barriers uh, to generosity that you have seen around the world? I mean, mm. um, you just touched on the fact that you cannot give financially, you're poor, but you could smile. Uh, give it, giving the gift of smile opens up doors, um, you know, or, yeah. or other ways. But can you explain to us what are some of the global cultural barriers that you guys are seeing to generosity? Yeah, I, I'd say one of them is I think every culture thinks that they're unique and that we just don't talk about. We don't talk about money. We don't. So we certainly don't talk about giving. Is it, you know, in my culture, we don't do the that. taboo. You don't talk it's about it. <laughs> right. And so the but here, here's the issue. We're, we're in over 75 countries now and 32 languages. And, and everybody has told us the same thing. So the good news is we're all in good company. We don't really talk about it. <laughs> and uh, but here's what I here's what we say about it is there there is an appropriate way to talk about it. And this is what we've you know convened with the journey generosity is is that there, there's actually a, a, a you know, there there is a way to talk about it that is cold, you know, that that everyone actually likes. Most people come into this and they think, oh, how can I'm going to how am I going to spend commit this time to talk about generosity when it seems countercultural? But most of the time, their response is, I wish we had more time when everyone's getting ready to go home. I wish we had more time together. You know why? Because everybody loves to be in a room full of generous people. <laughs> right. I mean, no one wants to be in a room full of takers. But man, there's nothing better than being in a full room full of people who are excited about being generous. Wow. That's good. Guys, we're getting a lot of questions already, and um, I want to jump into some of those. We've got a lot more questions for you guys, Mike and I do, but let me ask some of these questions. So I think we've touched on this, but I'll, I'll go ahead and ask it again, which is how do we as Christians uh, be generous if we can't afford to financially? And we've kind of addressed that, but you guys want to t answer that question more directly. Certainly. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, one of the, one of the stories that we tell um, in there that we show one of the video stories that we show is one of our friends actually in Wichita, Kansas in the U S and, and his name is Pete. And Pete says, um, you need to be generous with your life. And he uses that as an acrostic. So mm -hmm. generous with your labor, generous with your influence, generous with your finances and generous with your expertise. And so one of the one of the exercises that I sometimes have people do is we list those on a piece of paper, labor, the influence, the finances, the expertise. And I have them just take some time to, to start writing down what are ways I could be generous with each of those things. Mm. And it's amazing. You just spend a few moments even thinking initially about each of those categories. And all of a sudden you're looking at this page and you're going, Oh my goodness, I have so many different ways that I can live out this, this core DNA that God put into my being that, that I can be generous. So. That's awesome. That's a great example. Hey guys, next question. This is a, this is a tricky one for you maybe, but uh, one person is asking, what is the best way to start acquiring wealth so that you can be generous? You guys want to unpack that one? <laughs> well, I, I, well, I would, I would say the, the, the best way to, the best way to acquire wealth is to first be a giver. Is so, so the interesting thing is where uh, the way God designed, designed, you know, it, in one sense designed the world and then, and designed us. Uh, I think Jay Paul talked about that. We're all, we all have the DNA of that we all have been created uh, by God to be generous, right? And so, but in a lot of ways, right, it's it's understanding what we've received and then applying that, right? So the the whole idea about where there's this virtuous circle of 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 giving and receiving, right, and this reciprocity, and so the best thing to do is to kind of move into a situation and 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 be a giver because there's always reciprocity. So this is not about, you know, the, um, you know, you also have to be careful about, you know, the prosperity gospel. Um, there, there is some, there is some bad theology out there that says, you know, because we never obligate God with that. 
but there is the way that we've all been. If you think about it, when, when someone has, when someone has done something for you, given you something, you know, that, that, that you've really valued, what's your response? What's your, 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 well, how can I help them? How can I thank them? How can I, you know, what, what do I need to, you know, you think about them, you, you just think about them differently. Like I, I just got off a phone call with a, a friend of mine today and he says, Hey, uh, you know, our buddy s- said, you're, you're doing this. And like, this guy's an expert and you talk about his expertise. He goes, Hey, Daryl, whoever you need to talk to, I'm happy to get him on the phone for you. Mm. And I'm thinking, wow, you just, I mean, what, you know, what, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, what do I need to do to thank Randy for that? I mean, like he just offered, you know, to call people, offered his Rolodex, things like that. That's where, you know, and, and you get, you get that going for you. <laughs> That's right. Wow. That, that, what a great answer. Too. Sometimes we, sometimes we have this bifurcation that we, we think, oh, you know, prosperity is a bad thing. Um, but here, here's what I've learned and observed in this movement is prosperity plus generosity equals transformational stewardship. And so we celebrate when people are prosperous, when they're able to create businesses and, and serve people, create a market that generates resources. We love that. But then we want to we want to you know, put in that fertile soil of, of generosity, which then just allows growth beyond belief. So I want to ask you guys a quick question. So um, from from our organizational perspective, you had an experience. Um, uh, we uh, we try to uh, be a model in giving. Uh, we have over 100 different ministry partners, mostly indigenous, and um, we give them free platform, free broadcasting on Mahaba TV. Um, none of them pay for it. They all it's, it's our joy to be able to give back to them. But we learned very fast when we're dealing with certain cultures, in particular the culture in the Middle East, that if you continue giving, then there is no value associated with it. Um, later on, if you, if you are in a situation that you can't give, there is an expectation that is being set in certain cultures that, well, how come you're not giving to me anymore? Uh, because they're, they're used to receiving and, uh, and receiving and not really associating any value uh, to the gift that is being given. Now we face that with, with, in our organization. When, uh, mm-hmm. we, we, again, as I said, we give free broadcasting to all Iranian ministries that want to broadcast into Iran. But yet there are some that said, uh, why don't you pay for this? Why don't you pay for that? And it seems that there's no value associated. So um, we're still challenged, uh, somewhat challenged with that phenomenon. From your experience, how do you go about bringing a teaching to a culture that is used to receiving and, and expects to be, uh, to be given and does not necessarily associate any value to what is being given to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start us off and I'm sure Daryl will have some to add, but it's in a sense, it's not easy, but it's fairly simple. And that is that we build relationships. This is a highly relational ministry. And I remember when I first started working with Daryl, Daryl's like, Jay Paul, we need to show up and we just need to meet with people. We need to hear their stories, learn about their lives, their communities and build. So I traveled to India, uh, for instance, we, we have a great movement happening in India right now, but it was two years of traveling back and forth to India, like nine times to meet with people and build trust and build relationships before we actually did our first journey of generosity retreat. And so that, to me, that's, that's a, a key element of it. Yeah. And I, um, I, I would say, you know, the, the, uh, I mean, w- what I'm hearing is, is almost sometimes a, a context of entitlement. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's almost like dealing with our, dealing with our kids, right. That there's a, there's a sense around where I, I think, you know, again, it's, it's like a maturity of understanding gratitude, right? So um, there's, so I, I think it's just, you know, it, in relationship, um, you know, there is, you know, in, in true authentic relationship, there's, there's trust and where, where we have that, then we can have, we can have these conversations, you know, like where the, you know, to, to just, you know, continue to mature. I think a lot of the, Again, remember a lot of us, you know, kind of left, you know, I mean, not understanding the the value proposition that it's more blessed to give and receive, 
what, do, what, what's our belief system, our belief system kind of defaults to, to the world's belief system, which is like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take everything you got. And, and the more I get, the less you have, the, the better I am. Yeah. I mean, that's, unfortunately that's, that's, you know, kind of the base principle of the whole thing there. And so I think just then again, you have this family conversation. It's a, it, there, there's a funny story and Daryl, Daryl may want to add to this, but the, the first retreat that we did outside the U S in a different language was in China, in Beijing. Yeah. And <laughs> Daryl went, Daryl went, Daryl doesn't speak very much Chinese, by the way, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Daryl went and facilitated with a translator. And so this couple, this very good friends from Shanghai had invited several of their friends from around the country to come to this. And these people had no idea why they were there or what was going to happen. They just came because uh, these friends in Shanghai invited them to come. And so that that we often have that dynamic where people are like, so what are we doing here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. So building relationship and being able to relate that there is value, not necessarily. I mean, I, what you're saying is there needs to be an understanding of value. Yes. And that value was when Jesus gave that, uh, you know, the bread and the fish. Um, there was value in there. He wasn't just in, wasn't just feeding people. The goal was to bring them to a point of understanding the, 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 uh, the, God, the father's plan for them. And that's very, very important. Thank you for sharing that. David, back to you. Yeah, we've got uh, we've still got a lot of questions coming in. A lot of people asking these questions, which is great. Um, this is a good one. And I know this comes up. So this person is asking, uh, there are many places to donate. How do you know where to give? Mm. Mm. Yeah, that, we get that question all the time. And we're always, you know, the, the, the you know, our core Daryl's family gives a lot of money very generously all over the world um, to Christian causes. And, and so there, you know, we're, we're willing to sort of o- open up our strategies and share that with people, but we're also sensitive because we want to be non-prescriptive. So we've actually created another retreat that is a follow-on called the giving plan retreat. And that retreat is still non-prescriptive. There's no fundraising, but you, at the end of that retreat, you've written a giving mission for you and your family. You have really thought meaningfully about the causes that God is directing you specifically to support. Um, and, and we kind of have, we have some exercises that help you think about what are different causes that are out there. And then even like they look at allocations. So when you leave that retreat, you actually physically have a giving plan that is for your family with a mission, with causes and with allocations. And so we do do some of that. That doesn't happen as much in the journey of generosity, because that is more about the why question. Why is generosity important for everybody? And then the giving plan retreat is more about how and where. Yeah, that's excellent. And I, um, Daryl, if you want to comment, please feel free. But I want to do want to say when you guys Good. introduced that about the giving plan, uh, I immediately said, I want my wife and I to kind of go through this wow. together because, you know, just I there's such a blessing in this learning about this culture of generosity. And, you know, when you and your spouse can get on the same page and really just be together in this. Um, what a blessing for your marriage and the joy that it brings into it. So I really applaud you guys. This is a common kind of a next step. Well, how do we do this? And then get on the same page with your spouse and start to explore this together. Um, you know, I, I came home immediately. We went through Journey of Generosity together. We started going through the workbooks on the uh, giving plan together. And it's just been great in our marriage to, you know, do that together for sure. Awesome. Amen. I also want to um, say that it's one thing to be giving, um, you know, your one tenth at ch- uh, to church to your to your community, but it's another thing to go over and beyond that. And uh, and, and I really am blessed to hear this. So I want to combine a question that just came from uh, one of our viewers with one of the questions that we had in our team with you for you guys. Uh, the question that came from our um, viewer says, uh, "How do we um, greed plays a role in generosity?" How do we pull away from greed? And I want to couple that with this other question that um, there are other cultural challenges that come about. Greed is one of them, but there's some 
I guess I guess greed, greed is more of a natural thing that we all have in all of us. It's on our nature to somehow have that. I guess to some at some level we have to control it. But our nature and the cultural barriers to generosity. How do you guys prescribe us going and and, and defeating it or just uh, battling that? Yeah. Well, I, I think in, in, in one of our one of the, the first teachings in our journey of generosity really answers this and and is is one word. It's called grace. Hmm. You know, that grace grace is when we again when we fully understand um what we've received and who we are in Christ. I'll go back to that again. Then there's then there there's there's not you know so it that that takes the that takes the pressure of i've got to get more i've got to save more i've got to you know get more and things like that to where and and actually in the in that context you know it's um it's really helpful to know you know uh to kind of be self aware Am, am I operating, you know, out of a spirit of, you know, greed or fear or anxiety? And we know that we're operating in, 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 in the right spirit when those aren't there. And the way to way to break that is through is through generosity. And the, and the way to, you know, in one sense to get to generosity is to understand the grace piece. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say, again, this is not just about, you know, the mechanical part of I've got financial means and so i give it's really for all of us to understand first freely you have received mm. now free amen, amen. He did. See, so he's not saying hey give 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 and we're like wait a minute i don't understand i get like i don't have this i don't have this or my culture and this and you know we have all these things this is universal he already knows where in one sense what this is and he says no just understand take some time understand what have you received mm. It's like, what don't we have? We, we, we've been given everything so he can ask for everything. Daryl, I want to ask a question, follow up on that. You know, we, our experience with Journey of Generosity is that when people go through it, it's pretty much 100%. They feel happy on the other side. They're blessed yeah. to be part of conversation. But with this question about greed, have you guys seen people shut down in these journeys of generosities because they like yeah. – or really yeah. have to deal with greed or some other issue. I mean, have you guys yeah. seen the negative? We haven't seen that yet, but I'm my, that's my question. Well, I did have, um, so there, there are some, um, you know, I, I remember doing some in it, you know, in a, um, you know, in, in, in China where an, actually a number of the people that, that, that come there, sometimes half the group might not even be um, uh, Christian. But they're exploring. They're exploring this. They think they, they come with a friend and they're exploring this. I do remember one of the one of the businessmen as we go around to the very end and we're saying, well, how did you know what, what, what do you feel like the impact of this was? What are you going to do different? Or if you want to share with the group. And I remember everybody was going around the room sharing. And he said, he goes, you know, this was a very good time. Thank you so much. I've got a lot more money to make. So I'm not kind of into generosity right now, but thank you. Yeah, right. I said I appreciate no. <laughs> I appreciate an honest man right there. So it's yeah. you know I think we're um, you know God's timing is always perfect. So uh, I, I really did. I sincerely you know I, I I thanked him for for listening. And look, there's a value proposition out there. Like I said, we're not trying to force everyone to that. So you need to believe what you believe. So what is it you believe? Do you believe that it's, you know, that bigger, better, faster, more is the better value proposition or that is more blessed to give than receive? I mean, there's two major, those are the two major, you know, worldviews clashing them right there. So what do you believe and how's that working for you? Yeah. Um, yeah you know, one a, thing, another example in China, just real quick, I'm sorry, is uh, this, this gal, this businesswoman who went to the retreat eight times. <laughs> She's just like, I, I just loved her persistence. She's like, I'm going to get this thing. I'm going to get it. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, I, you mentioned something, Daryl, in there. And um, it's almost, you know, when we took uh, the Farsi group through it, a lot of them have this response. This is almost kind of a, a pre-evangelistic. It could be pre-evangelistic yeah. 
uh, thing because people that have that and you guys are welcome to people that aren't Christian. They yes. can come and see through this and they will get exposure to uh, just really the joy of this and all of this. And do you guys see that a lot as well? Mm. Well, we have seen, you know, it has been interesting, um, you know, because we've been doing this the same work in the U.S., but it's mainly been is just within the, the, the church. But globally, as we know, uh, so many of these cultures are, you know, there's very, very few Christians and they're inviting their business friends to this because maybe they had a, a great experience. Right. This is where joy and I want this for my friend. Right. So this is a whole spirit of what do we want for you, not what we want from you. Right. So they bring their friends. But we've I mean, Jay Paul and I've seen this in, you know, in you know, in India and Thailand and all the major kind of religions, we've seen people, you know, come to come to know Jesus. Why? Because of the grace. They, they, wow. they, they get this incredible first experience with with grace in such a unique way that they didn't think about. They think, again, it's just more tactical and financial when really, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, we, we back up, you know, way beyond that. And so, yeah, it's, I believe, look, I think one of the most winsome apologetics we have for the gospel is biblical generosity, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves a giver. And it, and it really is when we think about imitating Christ, when we are willing to, when we're willing to give people, I don't care who they are, in any culture, in any socioeconomic circumstance, understand when a when a gift has been given to them. And that's very powerful. And, and that's what I, in a lot of ways to me is a lot less, you know, a, about words. And it's and it's really more about this application. So if this is what we believe, then we would you know, we will be you know, we'll be out there. We'll be given our smiles. We'll be given our expertise. We'll be given our relationships. We'll be given our our finances, our time. This is the work of the church. I, I think this is awesome. very, very powerful. And again, it's all about opportunity because this is what let this is what when Jesus said, this is about lay up treasure in heaven. Is that there are so many things that benefit to us right now as well as in the future. Mm. You know, uh, as as hard for Iran. We are, I want to bring the conversation back to the, you know, uh, the, the journey of generosity for emerging church. So we, we're dealing with the emerging church in Iran, uh, in Afghanistan and Tajikistan, but the, the rate of the church explosion in Iran is much, much higher. So mm. uh, let, me, let me put the question in the context of the emerging church in Iran. One of the challenges that we have, and we could talk about this openly, is um, Hearts for Iran has a difficult time being able to bring the leadership or the members of the emerging church, indigenous church within the country of Iran, to a place of understanding the, the journey of generosity, the biblical generosity. Mm. And now there are also some complexities, and I want to uh, and I want to share this with you because let's say um, if somebody in Iran wants to go ahead and be generous towards God's movement, let's say um, uh, give a support to an organization outside of Iran, there are also sanctions and OFAC yeah. regulations that we need to be mindful of. However. Um, one of the things that we, we think is a key to our success, and I want to pick your brain, see if that works maybe for some of the ministry leaders that are watching this program. Uh, focusing on what you touched on, Daryl, er, early on, about half an hour ago, you used the terminology, you said kingdom math. I call it uh, kingdom economy, God's economy. Mm. It's the same thing. And uh, you, 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 again, you use another, you use another key term, uh, calling opportunity and co-inheritance. We are understanding that reaching the emerging church, if we focus on these principles, then the, the, the picture of that lady in Bible giving just one talent mm-hmm. becomes more palpable for our audience. And then they understand that Jesus says this lady surely gave more than any of you guys mm. has, has given for God. Um, what would you be your advice for an organization like ours that uh, are reaching persecuted closed regions that may not necessarily be able to practice generosity because of limited persecution in there, but yet they deserve to understand and know the biblical truth. What would be your remedy or prescription? And I guess one of those answers is to contact you guys and, and, and take advantage of your teachings. But can you just open that up in the next uh, couple of minutes that we have? Yeah. Jeff, you want to? I'm so sorry, Mike. Can you... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Can you repeat that one more time? I apologize. How would we, j Paul, how would you go about with, with an organization like Hearts for Iran? Now, we already have are doing this, but I want you to um, unveil this for our audience so they could learn from you guys as well. How could you come to an organization like Hearts for Iran that has its emerging church in Iran where people cannot give um, because of OFAC or the other things? And you can't give uh, outside of Iran. I mean, even outside of Iran, right. Um, how did we reach a culture and an emerging church that is not physically close to us? Yeah. Oh, man, that is just it's a great question. I think there's there's kind of a uh, there's probably a couple of different categories of answers on that. Um, one thing that I would say is early on, Daryl and I realized that we need to help people with this. Like we, we need to help provide practical ways for them to be able to execute on their giving. And so there's an organization that, that Daryl helped to co-found, he's on the board of, called TrustBridge Global. TrustBridge Global is this international foundation that helps people from different countries with things like cross-border giving um, legal and practical ways to be able to, to do that. And so um, we, and that has been an amazing ministry and is growing and is now all over the world in, in every region. And so we see that as a very Im important thing. So that's one of the ways. Um, Daryl, do you have some other thoughts on that? Well, I, th I think the, um, um, Mike, I think the, the important thing to understand is every single person, I don't, I don't care. I, I mean, you can, um, you know, one of the stories, you know, um, that, that we show is, is, you know, when we think about people in a refugee camp, mm -hmm. people dying, people have been completely displaced and things like that. Do we, do we think that, do, you, do we think the biblical message and the principles, <clears throat> biblical principles work there? Yes, they do. So I don't, I don't care you know, we can talk to a bunch of little kids. We can talk to a bunch of senior citizens. We can talk to any social economic circumstance. We have we have stories from all of those things. And so the, the thing where you say, like, I understand the context that you're talking about for, you know, for I I Iran. But the, the, the danger is, is, again, our expectation of what how we define that. Right. Particularly from the outside. Look at what's happening there. See, but this is also where, you know, God turns everything, you know, on, on his head. The real opportunity, right? I mean, none of us would have told the, that widow to do what she did. Mm. Right. But Jesus didn't stop her, right? So that, that's the whole thing about where, look, life is short, eternity is long. The, the, the Iranian church has all the opportunity in the world to be generous. I don't care what kind of, I mean, we, we were talking a little bit about that, like what happened in, in Venezuela. With, with the San Pedros. I mean, all their worldly possessions have been taken from them. They're in a million percent hyperinflation. I, I remember Jay Paul, I, he told me there are two guys from Venezuela. I knew what was happening there. I said, how in the world, who in the world goes to a generosity conference when, 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 when that is happening? It's, it, it's like, it's only, only operating in the context of, of the kingdom. Would we do that? So we have to be careful about what I call hardening of the categories. Yeah. No, we give them now. So they're they're persecuted. They're poor. They don't know, you know, uh, you know, they're younger believers. So they don't know a lot. So we give them a pass right now. That's the problem of what we've done in our own church, even with our own children. Mm. Right. And so whatever, you know, whatever the levels are, you know, like, so I don't care what whatever context you take us into. We just maybe change stories. But the principles are the same. The opportunity is the same because the, the the reality of where we want to experience grace, freedom, rest, contentment, joy, free fear, you know, freedom from anxiety, freedom from fear is found in biblical generosity. Wow. Daryl, you have you like really unpacked a lot. You've given us a lot of quotable quotes as well. So I just want to say, you know, we're running low on time. And this has just been such a grace filled conversation. And every time I'm around you guys, I really appreciate it because you're tackling this tough topic, but I feel happy at the end of the conversation every time we do it. So it's good. But I just want to go ahead. There's a ton of more questions. We're probably not going to be able to get to those, but how are people going to be able to get in touch with you guys after this? And how do they get 
into one of these journeys of generosities. Can you guys unpack uh, that a little bit for our audience? You bet. Yeah. So um, in the chat, you'll see there, there's a link to uh, an email, just simply events at generositypath.org. And um, so, so listen, the, the word there is if you want to attend a retreat, what I would, I would change that to say, are you ready to host a retreat? Okay. So all this thing is that you're going to get 10, 15, maybe 20 of your friends to come to a retreat. You guys figure out the date, the location, whether it's online or in person, and then you send that email to us and say, we're ready, we wanna do it. And then we will provide the materials and the facilitation for you. Um, and, and we'll also train you how to facilitate. You can also check out our website, which is www.generositypath.org. And it goes through all of the different, you know, retreats that we've talked about and experiences. So that's a great starting point. Yeah, I like that, uh, Jay Paul. So we're not looking for people to just come and join one. We want people to host one. So if you have been touched by this message and you say like, I want to get more into this, maybe gather a few friends, let Jay Paul know, and they will do the rest and they'll help walk you through this. And let me tell you, it's in a very uh, safe space. It's uh, very encouraging. It's not like Daryl said, it's not a fundraising seminar. Um, It's a great thing. I I highly recommend it. And we really want to encourage you to do that. I think that is the best way for people uh, to get connected. And you guys also have something coming up online. Uh, You were telling me about the um, online generosity festival. Do you want to share a little bit more about that? Yeah, we're super excited about this. So pre-COVID, um, we, we would do what we call celebration of generosity. We invite maybe 100 to 200 people from within a region to gather together. And this is live speakers and inspiration over a day and a half to two days. Um, worship together and just a wonderful time. And what we try to do in those events is really inspire people to host the smaller retreat. And so during COVID, of course, we can't do that. So we're going to do it online. So we have this really cool, we call it the Online Generosity Festival. And we have a great lineup of speakers. We've got Francis Chan is going to join us, uh, uh, Bob Goff from the U.S., Lord Michael Hastings from the U.K., and others. Daryl is going to share with us. And, um, and, and, and in that, we're going to have lots of inspiration and, and fresh stories that you can hear. And, um, and again, it's all geared towards inspiring people and encouraging them and showing them how to host the retreat. So that's on September 17th. I have passed along um, to your team, uh, David, I've passed along the initial information. So we have kind of a, a save the date um, email that you guys will get. And then there will be more information coming soon on that. Very good. And then you guys also have a podcast. That's right. That's right. It's becoming one of the most popular podcasts in all of Christmas. No, I'm good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. Daryl and I have, we've got two seasons of our generosity path podcast that we've done. Um, so there's about 12 episodes, give or take out there. We're going to be working on our third season here soon. And these are so much fun. So it's so just maybe 20 or 25 minutes where we get to interview somebody in our network. Some of them are famous people that you would recognize and others are just people just like us that are out there just having this, this incredible experience in the generosity movement. So yeah, check that That's out. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Daryl, we've heard uh, China, India, Middle East, Venezuela. Is there anywhere in the world you won't go to uh, inspire (laughs) people for generosity? Uh, We'll go. We'll go everywhere. It's it's it's. uh, Yeah, it's it's a message. You know, you'll send me anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Someone will go. (laughs) Yeah, I could be a little choosy on depending on the location and the time. That's right. Yeah. So, you guys, in the last uh, minute or so that we have, I wanted to go ahead and share a few things with you guys. Um, talking about podcasts, I also want to urge our, our, our viewers uh, to also turn into Heart for Your Own podcast. Um, we are uh, in the process of uh, redoing our website. And uh, so, for some of you guys that have come to the website and you see that we are getting some work on it, we have the uh, uh, good fortune of being able to re- uh, rebuild it and also provide the podcast to you guys for all the webinars that we have done. 
I do also want to share with you that um, a bit of good, uh, good and interesting news. Uh, I was talking to one of the uh, pastors in Turkey. They were saying that uh, some of, uh, one of the reasons that the underground church or the church in, in Turkey is growing so fast is because it's being led by a majority of Iranian refugees that have mm. come to Turkey now, and now they're bringing the Turks into uh, to get to know Jesus. That mm -hmm. is also a kingdom economy. That is generosity as well. Yes. So, yes. and that's that's one of the takeaways that we have from for this week. And mm. I just want to give glory to God. And uh, I do Amen. want to share with you guys that uh, next month, we do want to invite you to join us. Do not forget to join us next month. Next month, we're going to be talking about transforming the culture uh, of, of the country. Is Western theology a threat to the Iranian church? Wow. wow. Is Western <laughs> theology a threat to Iranian church? It's going to be a hot topic uh, because um, sometimes maybe one... Mm cookie cutter fits all but sometimes it doesn't are we mm. doing harm or are we doing good so we're going to be tackling that concept that perspective both from a perspective uh, perspective of the western um, uh, and the indigenous perspective for iran make sure you join us on that event and uh it gives me tremendous joy to just say thank you to J. Paul and Daryl for bringing such a foundational biblical teaching, not only to, to Heart for Iran and our ministry partners, but to, uh, to the globe. You're doing God's work, and that's something that a lot of cultures may frown on. It's a taboo, as you said. Nevertheless, God's truth uh, prevails. So I just wanted to take a moment and thank you guys for being uh, our guests on this webinar. Yeah. David? Well, thank yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Really enjoyed being with y'all. And thanks for the work that y'all are doing. Yes. Very, very God bless you. Love it. Yeah, we really do appreciate you guys. So thank you again uh, from my side. I really appreciate you guys too. And thanks for joining us on this. So guys, to everyone that's watching this, that's all the time we have. Uh, we've just touched the surface of generosity. So we want you to definitely reach out, find out more about how you can facilitate host a journey of generosity from these guys. And we're happy and thrilled to be partnering with them. So please join us next time for our next webinar. But in the meantime, reach out to these guys and we hope you have a great month and we look forward to seeing you again next month. Mm -hmm.